Hi everyone, we're just about to get started. Uh, just make, putting the last checks to the technical side of things. I think that's all ready to go. So thank you everyone for being here for our annual general meeting for Conversation at the Crossroads 2024. We'll obviously um, have the treat of having the annual oration later this afternoon uh, from Professor Raymond Gator that will commence at 3.30. We have um, the AGM, however, over the next hour. Um, it'll largely comprise of, um, after I, I undertake some formalities, there'll be three reports, uh, secretary's report with uh, time for questions, and we will invite you to give your impressions of the program over the last 12 months. We'll have a treasurer's report, uh, and then we'll have a convener's report in which, again, we'll call on you to um, share your ideas about suggestions for few things going forward. And then we'll move to the formalities of the election of the new committee and the specific um, um, offices within the committee. So before going any further, I'd like to make the traditional acknowledgement of country. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Bunurong peoples, who are the traditional owners of this land, the sovereignty of which was never ceded. Um, I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present. We recognise the unique place held by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the original owners and custodians of the lands and the waterways across the Australian continent, with histories of continuous connection dating back more than 60,000 years. We also acknowledge their enduring cultural practices of caring for country. So to get things underway formally, I have three apologies. Um, uh, uh, Bartley McGowan, Nail uh, Aiken and Anthony Flynn. Does anybody have any other apologies that they might have received that we can record for the purposes of the minutes? If not, just looking around, I'll, I'll, um, we also have uh, attendance that's been taken. Probably most of you have given your names at the front. If you haven't at, at some point, please make sure you do. Again, this is for the purposes of incorporation, we need to keep a, a pretty accurate record of what transpires at the AGM. I'll keep things moving quite quickly because we've got a bit to get through. So I'm going to invite our secretary, Susan um, Langell, to uh, present the uh, uh, secretary's annual report. And again, as I said, we'll have a little bit of time for questions. Thanks, Susan. Yes, Jan. I might grab a microphone if that's... You okay. Can, you can certainly use this uh, one. I'll just use one of these if that is okay. Can everyone hear me online? Which one okay? Uh, which one would you prefer? One one of them. Okay, I'll just Okay. Uh, if you could just bring up the slides that will stand. Um, I know that there's a few people that are here today that haven't um, come along or don't actually know much about Conversation at Crossroads, so I might just start with who we are. I would just maybe let you know our mission statement, because Conversation at the Crossroads has a vision to create diverse communities on a local and global level that empower more people to engage in the social, environmental and political challenges of our time. Our mission is to bring people to back together to be inspired and energized and to learn from each other. Through thoughtful and informed conversation, we equip people with the necessary tools, skills, and understanding to become drivers of change within their communities. Yeah, so um it's coming up. Yeah, so we're independent. We're not part of the University of Melbourne, we're just using the University College space. Um, so we're independent, we're incorporated. Um, and I'm going to tell you about all of the events and um, media and things that we've done over the last 12 months, starting with, um, what was that first one, sorry? Politics in the Park. Can you not see it? Uh, starting with our an annual inaugural lecture, which we had last year, and Joe uh, gave a lecture on, on Saturday, Sunday, the 22nd of October. Second to that was Politics in the Park event that was run on Saturday 25th of November in the Carbon Gardens. So this is an outdoor event uh, where we hosted um, people to come along and eat and discuss 
um, uh, issues. This one was on climate change and climate action. And we had some readings that we provided and we, uh, uh, we spoke about them at the event. Next, we had a film uh, event, which was a bit of a fundraiser to watch, and then we on the call, but we also had a discussion, this was at the Nova Cinema, we had a discussion over coffee afterwards and talked about the issues that were raised in the film. Um, uh, it's really about family, communication and relationships, and that was on Saturday, 28th of January. Next, we held a dinner event on lifting the spirits, stories, and hope and inspiration of hope and inspiration on the Thursday, the 8th of February. We held this at Castle Hotel, and Christian hosted uh, a prolific Australian poet, playwright, and essayist, Angela Costi. And uh, we also had uh, UN Youth Ambassador Amir Nazim. That should read a madness in the And he spoke about his work in youth mental health. Then we had another art event where we had people coming to view the Acme uh, art exhibition Marshmallow Laser Piece. It sounds like a bit of a weird name, but it was actually about nature and humanity. And we had a private tour from one of the presenters from ACME of this digital uh, exhibition. It was about invoking the wonder and awe at the scale of the cosmos and the connections that we have to atoms, stars and living organisms. So it was about having our respect for nature and everything around us. Um, and then we had a really lively discussion in the ACME open space and people came and discussed their views about this. Next up, we had a training event. This was a workshop held at Kathleen Sun Community Centre in Carlton on the 7th of April. And uh, this was hosted by uh, um, Joe and Joseph Camilleri, and we also shared a time of Q and A's. We had some short clips, and we also allowed people at their tables to have discussions. The volume of our six is so sorry. Can I just because you're moving? Oh yes. Would you like me to have it on? Okay. Next, we held a rather large event about artificial intelligence. This was held on Wednesday, the 17th of April. It was a panel discussion facilitated by Elaine Young, and I was the MC. We had four panellists, Ruth Lewis, Lucas Wiesman, Jacinth Flore, and Scott Wilson, and we spoke about the ethics of artificial intelligence. We had questions from the audience, and it was a really uh, lively and very interesting event. Then we held another dinner. This was again at the Castle Hotel. And we held this on the 13th of June. Christian Camilleri hosted uh, a guest speaker, Naura Mansour, who's from the Australian Palestinian Advocacy Network, and spoke about Australia's handling of the war in Gaza. Next, we had an event which uh, sorry, this is a series of events, Ethics in Turbulent Times, How to Bring Society to Higher Ground. It was held every Tuesday from the 10th of September to the 15th of October in the evening here at University College. And it was a mix of lectures, contribu contributions from experts, QA, debates, conversation in small groups sitting at these tables like this, role play and other exercises. There was online and in person. The first of those of which we had um, uh, and Peter Singer as guest speaker with presentations from Joseph Camilleri, and that was held on the 10th of September. That was about um, ethical dilemmas in a runaway world. The next one was ethical crises in technology, current and potential with a presentation from, again, from Joseph Camilleri and guest speaker, Thomas Metzinger. That was a recording. It was pre-recorded that um, Thomas Metzinger, again, he had some uh, health issues to um, 
On the third event, on the 24th of September, uh, we had a guest speaker, Tim Polo, speak about the F can ethics cut the Gordonian knot of climate change. Uh, we had a presentation from Joseph Camilleri again, and a great presentation from Tim Polo, also followed by a musical um, uh, performance. Then on the 1st of October, we heard about when state crime is right, who will guard the guards? The guest speaker, Lisa Hajar, and at the night was presented by Joseph Camilleri again. Then on the 8th of October, we spoke about religion and identity in the wake of Gaza, division or dialogue. We had two guest speakers, Susan Carland, um, who's a sociologist from Monash University, and then her colleague from Monash University, David Slucky. And um, they spoke about an event that they, at a project that they are doing at Monash University uh, in collaboration. Then um, the, the final uh, workshop topic was the Indian system and the prospects of ethical awakening. We had guest speaker Celeste Little, uh, who spoke and gave a Q&A, uh, and it was presented by Joseph Camilleri again. And um, it was uh, great to hear this because it was on the anniversary of the vote uh, for, for the referendum. Moving on to communication, uh, as I just said, we have a website and um, we also uh, host several different types of social media. We have followers in at least 22 countries. We have 380 followers on LinkedIn, uh, 170 or so on Facebook group. We've also got a Facebook organisation page which has about 580 members and 98 followers on Twitter. We also send out... Um, invites to um, a lot of people in the community. Um, I think it's several thousands, right? Um, sorry, I'll we'll just keep moving on. Podcasts. Uh, this year, the has been a recorded a podcast about, it's called the Drow Story which is about um, uh, which is uh, held on that uh, 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 what's the which is online, and then also we had an interview that I conducted with Rob McLean, who's actually here today, and um, which was about climate conversations. Then we also have videos uh, that are posted on our website and on 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 YouTube. Media and interviews. Um, Professor uh, Camilleri uh, spoke on. I gave an interview on voices, sociology of media, and also um, provided an article to Eureka Street, a National Declaration of Dignity. Uh, as I said before, we also have membership via Patreon. We've introduced this in 2023. At the moment, I understand we have 83 members, 59 are fee paying, 24 are not fee paying. And um, we offer non-fee paying for affordability reasons as well as other things. Um, we, that, having that funding through Patreon has provided us with some financial support at $1,055 in the last 11 months. And the membership is priced at $2 per month, which is about $24 a year. A little bit about the coordinating group. The convener is Joseph Camilleri, the vice president, or is vice the convener, deputy convener is Emily Theobald. I'm the secretary, Susan Langell. The treasurer, has, uh, as quoted last year, was Jacqueline Plunkett, who was treasurer with us until February 2024. And unfortunately, she had to leave us at that point for personal reasons. Uh, we meet monthly as a committee. Uh, there are also a number of people that are not photographed here that are on the committee, including Casey Bowie, Claire Woods. Um, we've had also members, Cherie Rose Watts and Jacqueline Blanket, Yelena uh, Kovacevic, 
and who have had to leave us over the last year because of other commitments. Also, Rashad Sedin and Ashan Arya have been part of the Okay, almost done. Yeah. Fundraising, um, we've had a fundraising event. Uh, Joe, are you going to speak about this a little bit later? Should I mention this? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've also had some fundraising. We've raised $17,775. And uh, it's just 2,775 short of our target. Uh, I'm not going to go through any more. So I'll be following for there. Yep. So we've got a bit of time for questions and answers. Uh, question and answer. Or we invite any questions about what we've been doing over the last uh, 12 months. Sorry, I know I'm fully not. Um, and we invite anyone's impressions. I know from just looking at the everyone here who's present. Um, some of you were at a number of those events. I, I recognise your faces. So what were your impressions of what happened? What were the strengths? What were the weaknesses? We'd invite any reflection on that now. Yeah. I did attend any of those wonderful topics. Um, but... Susan, when, um, when you were explaining the roles of the people, you left out Christian. What is his position? Um, he's also a committee member, and, but the, uh, it's not one of the treasurers or people He certainly has um, been in some of the events. Was there any other questions or comments? Yeah. Is there someone over here? Uh, I'm Susan for the great presentation. I am completely new. This is the first time that I'm here about what you are doing. It sounds pretty fabulous. The topics are all incredible, incredibly current and interesting. Just wondering, um, how are you managing, if you are managing, uh, to have any impact uh, with uh, politicians and the policies regarding this? And how are you planning, if you are not managing that politician bureau approach to move forward, to have more impact socially and community orientated? What you are doing that is really very, very interesting, important, and relevant. Thank you. Thanks for that question. I might refer to the joke. I'll bring that up. Yes, I, I think that we might um, just launch that a little bit later, but that's okay. But definitely inside this um, event. Are there any other uh, reflections? <laughs> yeah. But Um, so thanks for that um, coverage, Suzanne. That was very valuable for someone like me. Um, uh, I have been aware of some of those events, but not all of them. Um, the six sessions that you had in September, October, I understand that some students were given scholarships to attend, um, and they were to then write reflections afterwards. Uh, I was wondering if reflections intended to be shared with the wider members. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, we had uh, 11 nursery um, recipients who were attended. Uh, there was a, originally a few more, but we had to not out for personal reasons. But uh, of those 11, we uh, accepted uh, further feedback from them on events and we posted that on Patreon. So uh, if you want to have access to that, um, you can do that through membership. But you can you can just see it too, can't you? Yeah, you don't have to be a paying member to access that. It's just posted on that platform. So if you didn't hear that, um, you don't have to be a paying member. It's posted on Patreon. Yeah, we're going to take them. We might, um, we've got a few other things to get through that you can appreciate. So if you have any further reflections, everybody, could I 
invite you to um, communicate those to the committee. And this one is, oh, I'm sorry, I, I just need to keep moving because we're already last queen past. So, yeah. so I'm very sorry. Um, please um, thank, thank you, Susan, for that report. Yeah, excellent. I know how these things go because we've got the election of the committee coming up. So I want to now invite Rana, who has very graciously stepped in and assisted us uh, when, as you heard from Susan, we lost the services of our elected treasurer. So it's a special thanks to Rana for, for carrying on the, the work without the official recognition. But Rana's going to give us a, an overview of where we stand financially. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I? Yes. That should work. Hello, everyone. I am lovely to see the family on Facebook. And thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you so much for uh, that kind, those kind words, uh, Christian. So as an incorporated association, we are accountable to our members to report on our um, um, finance and you know we are not for profit and it's an incorporated association so there is not actual income and expenses but the statement um will show you how much income we have every year and how much expenses we have um I think yes. I just wanted to mention that you see four years usually the statements should have two years but intentionally we kept it for and transparency up to four years because that's when um, we started to have the, our first fundraising. And the second fundraising was this financial year that uh, passed, financial year that passed. Uh, in total, uh, we had 223,057.45. Sorry, I didn't bring my glasses. Uh, total income. And our total expenses were um, twelve thousand two hundred and one point fifty one. the The balance at the bank account by end of June uh, twenty four was ten thousand eight hundred fifty five point ninety four. The next one, please. Uh, one of the main things that I want to just note is that um, this year specifically is different than the other years because we have a staffing. We have one staff member who is getting paid and actually um, the, the investment was very valuable and it really changed the whole process and streamlined the work that we are doing and it was a huge help. So really appreciate uh, Talita's work and the process. And that's why we really, it's having a treasure is really critical because the staff needs to be paid and the uh, president or conveyor should approve that. The next report should be our balance sheet. Am I saying right? Yes. So you see through the years, the four years, we have quite healthy uh, income and expense. We try to keep the balance, but the fund is not meant to stay in the account. So we have to have a good balance of expenditure. We just secure the ongoing expenses, especially website and Zoom account and these type of things and the staff. But apart from that, we don't secure necessarily um, any saving for a long term. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention that the, the last four years we had um, spent on um, events as much as we made. So there's always a very healthy balance between what we bring in and what we spend on the events because the quality of the events are always really important for us. I think that's the main things that I needed to mention, but I'm happy to answer any financial question that you have and you have all the numbers and uh, we report to consumer affairs every year. So, and we are tier one tier. because it's under 500,000. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brianna. Do we have some questions? 
Any questions? Oh, my apologies. Any questions? Sorry, I'm people getting my right. I have one quick question. You yes. rightly pointed out that we now employ someone. Yes. It's been really, I can speak as a committee member. It's been wonderful acquisition for our committee. And to leave that, it does a lot of work. Presumably, if she's to continue to be employed, we need to keep bringing in money. We, is that, does our income project to keep, keep her employed for some time to come? Just for everyone's benefit. And if so, how long roughly do you, would you? Yes. Um, I can report. We have. The last time I've checked was 19,000, but to make sure I have an accurate number. So it takes a little bit of time. It's okay. Um, so we have 19,922.21 in our account. It uh, will secure um, eight months, eight to 10 months. And also it secures the um, ongoing um, Expenses on the uh, website and other things that she on and website. Uh, and uh, the main reason of the fundraising was basically that basically for events we don't do the fundraisings and we go on, but for some some expenses like that we need some support on the crowdfunding. Yeah, thank thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Thanks so much, Rana. I'll, we can fight again. At which point I want to invite our convener, Joe Camilleri, to come and um, give us a report. I think this will be, more, Susan's given you an excellent account of what has happened. I think Joe will look forward um, and invite you also to contribute to thoughts about where, what directions we might go. So Joe, I will invite you to the lecture. Do you want to hold it, Joe? Well, the first thing I need to do, um, I want to cover quite a lot of things, but I'll do it very quickly. Uh, under headings, which will appear in due course. No hurry. The first thing I need to do is to thank, uh, first and foremost, uh, all those who have contributed, participated, um, contributed by their presence, uh, by their help, and uh, financial contributions as well. Uh, and in particular, I need to thank the committee, uh, which has been very hard working. We have lost two or three people in the course of the year, uh, but nevertheless, those who are still on deck have played a very important role, and I want to thank each and every one of them uh, formally uh, at the conclusion of this uh, last 12 months. And I want to uh, introduce and thank at the same time uh, Talit, Talita, who is there, and uh, you can make yourself known, who has been working for us uh, on a casual basis. And uh, she's done a wonderful job in the time that she's been there. And we're very grateful. Thank you. Now, there's a lot of things I want to point to, but we have to start uh, with the world in which we live. Because after all, Conversation at the Crossroads is meant to be uh, a response to life as we see it. And there is one thing that is, I think, remarkably clear. Next year, like this year, maybe less, maybe more, but like this year, it's going to be a tumultuous year. Hmm. Not a lot to be very happy about. Of course, there are umpteen things that are happening on a small scale, which are extremely positive and which raise people's hopes. But we know uh, that there are going to be major, major issues um, that we will have to contend with as citizens of both uh, a country and also citizens of the world. Uh, we have at the moment two raging conflicts. We all know about them uh, in uh, the Middle East and in uh, 
Ukraine. And of course, there is another one which is bubbling, which should, should it ever come to violence, will make these other two pale into insignificance. We know what we're referring to, and that is the China-US conflict. Should it ever come uh, to uh, the use of force? And it is a possibility. And then there are so many other things. Climate change, uh, the latest uh, uh, report, suggest that we may be heading not to the 1.5 uh, that the world community has uh, committed itself to, but to 3.5, which should it come to pass without dramatic action, will mean, uh, to put it very crudely, unbelievable floods and incineration in many parts of the world. Huh? The events uh, of uh, that we're seeing in Spain and in Vietnam and so man many other places uh, will be uh, but uh, a pale shadow of what's in store. So the, it is going to be tumultuous. Uh, we're going to have uh, a not unimportant election coming up in two days' time and another election in this country, Australia, uh, sometime in the first half of this coming year. Uh, and we know issues unresolved before and all the likelihood is unresolved after. Mm. Australia is uh, facing a great number of challenges uh, of which the referendum that was mentioned in passing is th the debacle that was the referendum uh, will be here uh, to haunt us for some time to come. So there are big issues. And the point of conversation, someone was asking about that, uh, we don't uh, directly have an input on what decisions are made. We are trying to establish in a small way, a drop in the bucket, uh, but still a drop, hopefully a few more drops as the time goes by, uh, by way of a more informed, <laughs> Tuned, attuned conversation to the issues, the challenges we face, uh, taking hope from the positive signs and contributions of so many people, and hopefully pointing in directions uh, which may be more hopeful for the future, in a nutshell. Now, what do we see then for the coming 12 months very quickly? Well, I think we need to build, excuse me, our national and international profile a lot more. Uh, we've spoken. Um, we've spoken more than once about the need to develop that profile. It's very difficult to do it with in-person activities. You can't. Uh, we're not going to be flying people uh, across uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of kilometers. So. Because we are reacting, have reacted to the COVID period, when in our first two, two years and a bit, everything was online, we've gone for in-person events and hybrid events, a mixture of the two. They are very, very time consuming to mount and expensive. Okay. Uh, so as we think nationally and internationally, we will have to make more use of online events, uh, not at the expense of having some, uh, uh, of course, in-person events, but at the end of the day, we in Melbourne, and after all, uh, Conversation at the Crossroads was born in Melbourne, have to realise, we in Melbourne have to realise uh, that the world does not, unfortunately, revolve around Melbourne. Unfortunately, it does not revolve around Melbourne. So when we have online events, if we want to capture uh, the time zones in Europe and America and parts of Asia and Africa, we might have to eat humble pie. And if it means an event that starts at 10 p.m., well, so be it. So I'm warning you, <laughs> there's going to be more of that. We have to. 
Uh, we'll still have things that are a bit more friendly to Melbourne participants, but we have to put some events uh, that uh, are cognizant of our regional and global neighbours. And two other priorities we've spoken a lot about, and I want to repeat them. One, we have to be much more in tune with the cultural diversity of the place we call Australia. Hmm? Uh, we have to engage with people of different cultural backgrounds and bring to the fore uh, their extraordinary culture, language, uh, faith and the and the uh, richness of all that and make that part of the conversation. So that's going to be very important, easy to say and hard to do, but we are hopeful. And secondly, we have to make sure, and this is also extremely difficult, that we engage a new and emerging generation. Uh, if anything, uh, conversation at the crossroads is weighted a little or a lot, depending on how you make uh, the assessment towards an older demographic. And we have over time to shift that, uh, a more representative cross-section of the community. And that's one of the reasons why, for example, we offered those bursaries to people aged 30 and under. And we hope we intend to do more of that. Now. Of course, we want to do more about conversation, education, and civic engagement. And there are three possibilities. Uh, one, I think, is more than a possibility. I think uh, um, Emily is going to take charge of that. And uh, she may want to add a word about that uh, uh, in a moment. Uh, a series of podcasts on nuclear weapons, nuclear weapons testing, nuclear weapons, and I think nuclear power too. Uh, and uh, these uh, will see the light of day, uh, I'm sure, uh, beginning next year. So that's on the, definitely on the cards. Uh, I don't know whether Eddie's here yet. Uh, maybe he will be in a little later. Uh, we have been, he in particular, has been working for some time on uh, using digital media uh, to put, breathe some new life, exploring that, breathe some new life into uh, the democratic ethic. We're supposed to be a democracy, uh, sometimes more in words than deeds, but how to make it happen. Uh, and so he's been exploring a whole lot of different tools that may be available for the purpose. And I think we will aim for something like this. Um, it's a lot more thinking and uh, and working out the detail, a citizen assembly. Ideally to be convened in the first half of this year, a citizen assembly which might bring, we aim for about a thousand people together in 100 groups of about 10, to put it in round figures. Uh, at which they will consider a proposition that's put before them on an issue of particular importance. It, this will be Australia to begin with. Um, it's an, complex enough to do it inside the country. And uh, the, uh, uh, the technology will enable to put those 100 groups in touch with each other. And it will be automatically operated facilitation. Well, you don't have 100 facilitators, it will be done through the technology. And we've already had an, a demonstration uh, by uh, the, the Stanford Laboratory Center that's been working on this for many years, and the technology appears to be proven and uh, very much committed to the democratic ethic. So maybe that's the way to go. Uh, but please stay tuned. This is going to be a major development. We may, considering uh, the issue that's bubbling away, this is just a thought to give you the feel of it. As you know, the alternative government of this country, and this will be prior to the election, has put nuclear power on the table, rightly or wrongly. I won't tell you where some of us stand. Uh, well, we could try and get a citizen assembly before the election 
on that very question, confronting a very specific proposal uh, with the ability. And then, of course, there'll be the opposite view to the proposition. Amendments can be tabled. And eventually those people, 500, 800, maybe up to 1,000, uh, will make a statement, uh, will agree or vote one way or another. Uh, details to be pursued, we've got some way to go, but that's an idea. The third thing, we've been, we're going to be approached uh, by pearls and irritation, some of you may know of it, uh, to be a partner in bringing out uh, an extremely well-known person who is probably uh, a leading uh, contributor, commentator and writer and speaker on the issue of China's place in the world. And uh, that'll be Ambassador Mahbubani, who was uh, Singapore's um, ambassador and from memory uh, was um, uh, president of the UN General Assembly uh, in his position uh, during the course of his diplomatic career. Anyhow, that's yet to come, but it gives you a flavor of some of the bigger things we might uh, uh, consider. Now, uh, we have, I have to close. We're interested in partnerships with other groups and organizations, and we will expl explore that more. We need to decentralize. Too much of conversation at the crossroads at the moment requires the committee, the coordinating group, to take an initiative and to hold it centrally, online, in person, or a mixture. In my view, it's only my view, that's got to stop. We've got to have independent initiatives with help from the coordinating committee, where required, taking part in the suburbs, in regional Victoria and other parts of Australia. Initiative by others, much, which might include initiatives by some of the people here. Doing little things, bigger things, up to them, as so long as they contribute to respectful, informed, thoughtful conversation. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is we need to think about membership on a more sustained uh, scale than is so far the case. We've established Patreon, but we haven't really flagged it very much. And again, Emily has been the, um, uh, the prime mover in that direction. We've got to make uh, Patreon a more widely known uh, platform, not only to subscribe and be a member, so to speak, of Conversations at the Crossroads, but in order to have serious dialogue conversation going on. And finally, funding. Uh, all of what we're saying costs money, as you know. So we need to do more to raise the funds to sustain the work we're doing. And uh, two things uh, I want to finish off on this. Two things that need to be said. One, we have to reach the target of 20,550. We are about 3,000 short, give or take. Uh, and so we're going to make one last attempt to bridge the gap. And we, we don't ask or put this as a request for someone to put their hands in their pockets. No. Our preference would be that you bring it to the attention of two or three others who might. Okay. You just say to someone, I'm doing a bit of fundraising for a worthy cause. Can you help me? Can you help me? You know someone very, very well, and they would trust you. So that's what's required. And then into next year, please take initiative. Do a little fundraising, a garage sale, anything, a raffle, anything you feel like doing, which might bring a little bit of uh, funding uh, for if you think it's a worthwhile cause. So the, my message is uh, a lot of things are possible, uh, but we need one, the most important thing, uh, the human element uh, to imagine it, to work on it, uh, to connect with it, and to bring it to the attention of others. And uh, we need some material resources uh, to also make that happen. We remain hopeful 
I think there are exciting possibilities and I hope all of you and others that you know uh, will want to be part of it. Thanks, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, so I might ask you to just stay where you are for a moment. I know time's pressing on, um, but I do have on the agenda here that you drafted uh, some opportunity for people to share any ideas. Did you want to still hear? And people are always welcome to send the committee, the convener ideas. Of course, this is not the only opportunity you'll have, but if anyone has thoughts now, perhaps regarding anything Joe has just told us about, potential things we will be looking to do, or thoughts of your own, perhaps you'd like to raise them now. And yeah, we've got someone with their hands here. Sorry, give us one moment, get this to you. Yep. Sorry, it's just so our friends online yeah, can hear as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, um, my name is Lauren Splitter. I'm very pleased to come into contact with this organisation, which I haven't known about, I'm afraid to say, and I've known Joe for quite a long time. Um, just very, very quickly, I'm really interested in a lot of what you're doing here. And um, my original background was in philosophy, and I was involved in something called Philosophy for Children for many years. What I'm now currently really interested in is dialogue, conversation. And in addition or over and above the actual topics that you've been mentioning, right, I'm interested in what we might call the art and the craft of dialogue and why it is so damn difficult, right? What are the obstacles to dialogue? And just one first thing to mention, um, I've just launched or started a series, what I hope will be a series of podcasts with high school kids um, that I'm calling Let's Talk About This, A Dialogue with Teenagers. And um, that's a bit of shameless promotion. We're only just starting with this. It's got practical issues, but... To me, it's very important that it does link up with the idea of bringing in newer generations. So maybe there'll be an opportunity to join the committee at some point. But anyway, thank you so much for everything you've been doing. That would be Sounds very interesting. interesting. Yes. yes. Is anybody, is there anybody else has something they'd like to no. offer up? Right at the back there. I'm sorry, you know, I'm not right at the back. But, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but it, it was an earlier question about um, engagement with politicians. I was just wondering what your thoughts about that were. Uh, uh, well, uh, to say it hard, we have not engaged with politicians. Incidentally, someone may be attached to a political party, but their claim to fame is not because they are a member of a party and we invite them to speak because they have made a contribution on climate change or indigenous issues and so on, uh, but we don't invite them to participate wearing the political party hat, and we won't. That's very clear, uh, because we take a fairly dim view of political point scoring. Uh, there's enough of that going in the parliament. We don't need to do it here. Um, and if you invite one, how could you not invite the other? Uh, you don't want to be uh, seen as sort of taking a preference for one as opposed to the other. So we stay clear, but if any people who have a political affiliation have made a noteworthy contribution on some issue or other, and they have something to say that would be useful, uh, well, of course, we'd love to hear from them. Mm. I'm, I'm involved with a loose organisation that runs what's called Spirituality in the Pub, and um, that's about conversation too. It starts with a meal and then it has conversation. Essentially, it started off being about church topics, but... As we all know, spirituality is about our lives, which is what we're on here about. I'm just thinking that there might be scope to link up with um, the committee and um, further that in some way. 
But I'm turning to say very quickly, uh, we would love to link up with anyone who has an interest in dialogue, conversation, connecting, connecting uh, in mind, connecting in spirit, connecting in theory, uh, with some relevance uh, to the world that we are living. So, yeah, absolutely, yes. And there are several groups. Lawrence has just mentioned what, uh, one. Um, but there are many others who are working around issues of democracy, networking, and so on. And we're beginning to explore, might there be some useful connections? But early days. But yes, I think I can honestly say we are open to the idea. That's why I mentioned partnerships. Look, given the hour, um, I'm going to call an end to that part of proceedings. Thank you very much. To And again, to reiterate, it's a standing invitation for those with thoughts and ideas to contact any time the AGM is... The questionnaire that people can fill in. There is a questionnaire that, we'll, that people can right. fill in today that will circulate. So be sure if you've got any thoughts to please put them down on paper. We're now... Yes. Just very briefly add to that. If at any point in time you come across someone or you would like to recommend us to someone else... There's a form on the website that you could refer to people at any time and our email is also there. So if maybe it's not you, but you want to put us in contact with someone else, um, that will go directly to the committee as well. Right. So, okay, so we're at that. Do you want me to hold this? Oh, no, I'll give you a Sorry, Sorry. That's okay. We're at that point uh, of proceedings. So I've got this one on. Do you want me to swap? No. We're at that point where we we, we need to elect a new committee. Um, so I'm going to go through this process as quickly as I can. Let us begin with uh, the four positions, the four named positions of the committee. We'll deal with those four positions first and then uh, with the remaining members on the committee. So. I have um, a few nominations for those four positions. I have, I'm going to take them on block. I'm going to read them out and take them on block, but please, I will give an opportunity for any everybody to say what they need to. Um, Joe, I, I have, I, I understand you're prepared. You've been nominated to continue on as convener and you're happy to accept that nomination. Uh, I need to just make one sentence. Yeah. If I do. Well, I'm happy to accept it, but if I am nominated, uh, it will be my last year as convener for sure. Uh, this will be five years in that period of time. We will need halfway through this term, in that case, uh, to get a transition going in earnest, which will take a bit of time and effort. So I did accept it, uh, but with that intention, on my part, this will be the last year. Yeah. So I'm happy, thank you, that's understood. So I'm happy I've nominated Joe. Does anybody, would anybody like to second it? There's a formality that I have to observe here, everyone. Yet, um, we just have to record this, as you know, as you well know, Rana. So we'll just hold that for the time being. We'll see if we can vote on block. Um, Emily. There may be other nominations. Oh, there may be other nominations, I should say that. Yes, yes. I was going to go through the ones I have nominations for. Yeah, that's still cool for me. Yep. Do we have any other calls for nominations for the for the convener? I'll let that sit, but I'll I'll reopen that call. Uh, the next the next position is deputy convener. That's currently held. Well, it was by Emily, and Emily, you've been nominated by Joe to continue on for a, another term. Um, firstly, let me ask if, the, if anyone wishes to second that nomination. Yes, I've got Claire. I'm jotting this down to KC. Um, does anybody else wish to nominate for or nominate someone for deputy convener? Okay, I'll come back to that. Position of secretary, 
Eshan has nominated Tram Quinn uh, to, 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 to be secretary. Does anybody, Tram hasn't been on the committee before, but she's attended a number of our events and expressed considerable interest in our goings on. I believe she's, she's accepted the nomination. Could I have it then a seconder? Yes, Susan. Does anybody else wish to nominate or nominate someone else for the position of secretary? Uh, sorry, yes, secretary. That's correct. I'm getting confused. And that leaves us with the fourth uh, treasurer. Now, this was a, been a little bit complex this year. As mentioned, I won't go through it all again. Rana has very graciously stepped in to help us out. Um, but I think for reasons I won't go into too much, Rana, you don't want to be official. You would not like to officially stand for treasurer. Unless, unless we have somebody who wants to give up the role yeah. and is committed to stay. Yeah. Then yeah. The nominee. So let me let me put that to one side. Would anyone like to nominate for the role of treasurer or nominate someone for the role of treasurer? <laughs> Not a hard job. No. Please pay attention to emails, pay invoices. Keep the book and the possible that I've over the future. What was that? The DGR. The DGR. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm not hearing a great deal of commotion, Rana, which spells another year of service for you, I suspect. That's the la absolutely the last. Okay, so. Rana has done this from the very beginning. I know. I know. Right. Rana, do you, are you happy to be nominated? Okay. Do I have a seconder? So I, I will note myself as the, as the nominator. Mm, and that Christian and Claire, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take those on block, I thought. So we, now we have to vote. Just to remind everyone, we have Joe for, con, for position of convener, Emily for deputy convener, Tram for secretary, and Rana for treasurer. Uh, all those in favour, please raise your hands. I'm seeing if I actually have to do a count. All those against? Okay, I think we can regard that as carried unanimously or without opposition. So well done to the new office holders. There are, however, other positions on the committee that need to be filled. Those four can't certainly do everything by themselves. So I have a number of names in front of me. I'd like to read them out, but without wishing to make this uh, ex exclusive, please feel free to nominate yourselves or someone else for the committee. But I have a list of names. Claire, you've been nominated by Joe. Eshan, who's Claire's already a member of the committee, as is Eshan. Um, I'd like to nominate Eshan. I know he's here. Uh, Eddie Kowalski is not present in the room. Joe, you've nominated him. KC Bowie, who's also on the committee and ha has been on the committee for the last little while, the last year at least. Uh, I don't have a nominator, but I'm happy to serve as a nominator. Susan is going to nominate KC. Ahmad Nisar, who was one of our early presenters, but has come to a number of our events. Joe, you've nominated Ahmad. Is he here? I expect he will be, but then he's out. Yeah, he may be online. Um, now, I've also got nominations for some new people. Be thinking about anyone putting uh, up their hand. And online. Hopefully, Emily's monitoring that. Um, um, Shabar Vaki. Joe, I have here that you've nominated Shabar. Yeah. I think she probably is online, but I don't know. Yep. Yeah. And Sabur, Sabur yep, yeah. uh, nominated by Eshan. Yep. Uh, Bartley McGowan, you've nominated Bartley. Uh, Joe, is Bartley here? No, he's... I, I, no, he's an apology. I remember that. And Nayil Akan, who's also an apology, but has also been nominated. 
Joe, I'm, 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 I understand they've been not. They understand they've been nominated oh, and have accepted me, and have accepted the nomination. Okay, that would make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine further. Uh, that nine additions to the four. So that's not bad. That's not bad. That would make thirteen. A committee of thirteen. Are there any other nominations? Before I haven't got any seconders yet, but we can do that. I think rather quickly. Anyone else want to nominate or nominate someone for the committee? And they should be encouraged. What about a gentleman who? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, is there a, is there a limit here? There is a limit, but we have not yet reached the limit. I think we have one more place, if I remember, yeah. Joe. I'd certainly be be willing if there's someone who is nominating. Although I'm sort of a little bit nervous about going from a position of. Uh, being a complete obscurity to one of the vast influence of power. <laughs> um, Having served on the committee, I can assure you any delusions of grandeur will soon be. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Could I get your full name for that, Lawrence? Yeah. Right. Uh, Casey, you were the nominator in that instance. Okay. Now I need seconders. We can have more. Um, we can have more. Yeah, it's a standing invitation. Because we can we can have more nominations and then vote, right? We haven't voted them in. It's a very democratic process. This. Any other nominations? What about um, Alison? Now, I don't have seconders for the 10. Would anyone? I, I, that's what I was hoping to do, to expedite the process. I'm not here yet. Yeah. Who was the Can we just pause? Um... Yes. Just pause for a moment, folks. Sorry, was there somebody online just mentioning something? Yep. Yes, you can speak now. Um, what about Alison uh, Brunos? Uh, oh, daughter. daughter. Is it Ava Bronowski? <laughs> Yes. yes. Ava Baraski. Yes. Have we approached her? Yep. Has someone approached her? I don't know what the question is. No, she haven't was... approached her. She was one of our bursary recipients. Who joined online? I'm just repeating for the sake of the microphone, Joe. Who 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 joined online? Yeah. Is someone wishing to nominate her? Yeah, I am. Shoba Baraski. Okay. And that would that. Sorry. I'm happy to reach out to Ava, but yeah. we wouldn't be able to finalise that today. We can't finalise that because she's not here to accept the nomination unless she's online. I, I haven't looked at the... No, she's not online. Okay. But we, we did this last time and we can certainly approach people after the meeting, right? Okay. Claire's... Thank you very much for that, the person online. So sorry, it's 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 Shoba, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. So could I could I now um this is the last major order of business. I'll try to be quick whilst making it fair. Any last calls for nominations? So what I'd like to put, what I'd like to move is that we now vote on. I'm gonna leave Ava off the list, but approach her separately after the meeting. So we'd need to minute that, that we will resolve to approach Ava. But what I would like to do is to call for, a, 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 a to have the following people elected onto the new committee. And I'll read their names out again. They've all been, um, that all been nominated. Although Claire, I'm gonna be the seconder for your nomination, just so you're not the seconder of your own uh, position. Seconded by Christian. So we've got Claire Woods, Eshan Arya, Eddie Kowalski, who just went entered, Casey Bowie, Ahmad Nizar, um, Shoba Vaki, uh, Sabu Dieu, Bartley McGowan, Nail Aiken, and Lawrence Splitter. So can I have a show of hands to vote? Yes. Okay, I think that's going to be anyone against. Okay, so I think that's carried unanimously. So we well done. We now have a new committee. And that brings us at seven past, so not too bad. That brings us to the close of the meeting.
Um, thank you very much for your attention. We've got a nice afternoon tea. Um, and you'll all know that at 3.30, we have the senior, second annual oration. But for those who were just elected, I have taken the trouble of making a, a brief list of points of expectations and what's encouraged for new committee members. And I do this only because it's not always obvious, right? No, um, but but I, I'll distribute these uh, to the new committee members, some of which won't need them. But thanks again for your attention.